Hey guys, how's everything? How's your review going? Now, I want to talk about, no, first off, I just realized that the most important thing with retaining information for the NCLEX is not necessarily focus, but actually more of calming the mind in order to retain the information, right? It's important for the mind to be clear and relaxed in order for us to be in the optimum mental state, right? And also I want to explore fun and creative ways for for us, for everybody to learn and for you to pass your exam. So let's begin with, with this review. I want to go over certain medications that you will most likely encounter in your NCLEX exam. Uh, specifically, I want to go over a few anti-Parkinsonian medications or Parkinsonian drugs, okay? For obviously for patients with Parkinson's disease. Now, let me let me tell you a personal story. I always hated pharmacology um, years and years ago when when I when I had when I took my uh, my bachelor's. Now, and I knew plenty of people that do. And and here's the thing, and here's the reason why that is. When we talk about pharmacology and medications, our unconscious automatically starts to <clears throat> begin to get anxious, right? We we question our pharmacology knowledge. We don't have enough confidence in ourselves because for some reason we we fear medications. Now, we fear medication related NCLEX questions, right? which is somewhat true since most pharmacological related questions on the NCLEX is either a mid-level question or a high-level question, right? So we are all in intimidated with uh, with medications. And, and why is that? Now, this is a theory that I think that is. I think the reason why is because we are not prepared, right? I've, I've read a quote once before that mentioned that, and it said, luck is when preparation meets opportunity and the big word here is preparation and if you as a test taker is not prepared then how are you supposed to be quote unquote lucky enough to get a pharmacology question answered correctly right and if indeed we know this is a fact that there will be medication related questions that are significantly important to answer correctly since these are mid-level and high-level questions and if answered correctly obviously puts you closer to passing your NCLEX then then why are you not preparing for this that is a question that you need to ask yourself you, you can't just hope and pray that there wouldn't be a pharmacological related question in your exam since pharmacology is is a relative factor to nursing and once you've received your license and begin working as a nurse, your primary job is to administer medications. The foundation of your career is based on medications. Unless, of course, in the future you follow a path of, let's say, a surgical nurse or a maternity and delivery nurse, right? But, but even then, the knowledge of pharmacology and medications will play a major role in your life, okay? Now, on that note, let's look at the meat and potatoes for this review. Now, I want to go over anti-Parkinsonian medications, okay? Now, specifically, I want to go over benztropine or cogentin, okay? And we'll also go over levodopa, which is an important medication for our patient with Parkinson's disease. Okay, now first, let's look at our patient with Parkinson's disease. So, what is Parkinson's disease? Now, we all know it's a progressive neurological disorder right and specifically what's going on is uh there's a destruction within the nerve cells specifically within the basal ganglia okay and what we want to look at and take note is that there's a couple of neurotransmitters that are really being affected so please make sure to take note of this and what occurs is that basically there's a decrease in the dopamine levels and an increase in acetylcholine okay now these are neurotransmitters right Again, there would be a decrease in dopamine and an increase in acetylcholine. And with Parkinson's disease, as we all know, it affects the nervous system, specifically more in the autonomic part of the nervous system, and eventually affects the movement in our patient. And this is manifested through major symptoms, right, as we all know, of our patient having Parkinson's disease. 
such as tremors, right, which is basically like shaking, it usually begins with the limbs and eventually affects the major parts of the body. Um, another one, another big one is bradykinesia, okay? Now, bradykinesia is just a term used for slow movement, okay? So it, makes, it basically means slow movement and with the patient with Parkinson's disease, over time, it reduces their ability to move and kind of restricts the, the movement in our patient, okay? Another big one is aphasia or aphasic, right? Or speech slurring and speech changes. And what happens is that basically there's a loss of the autonomic function in the lingual muscles and and also the tongue and eventually affecting the way our patient talk. And lastly, there's rigidity or rigid muscles, right? Basically, the muscle kind of stiffens. And this is important because it kind of limits the person's range of motion, okay? So our main goal for our patient with Parkinson's disease in regards with medication, okay, is basically to reverse the effect of the neurotransmitter, specifically dopamine and acetylcholine, which results in these symptomatic um, symptoms, right? Therefore, we use what we call anti-Parkinsonian medications, right? We call it anti-Parkinsonian medications because it basically reverses the effect of these neurotransmitters. So what we're doing is we're treating the symptoms, right, because there's no cure for Parkinson's disease. So when treating our patient with Parkinson's disease, we usually look at three what we call anti-Parkinsonian medications, right? And that would include Benztropin or Cogentin, Levodopa, and the last one would be a combination drug called Carbidopa Levodopa or Senemet, okay? Now first, let's take a look at Benztropin or Cogentin. So going back to our patient with Parkinson's, remember that I mentioned that our patient with Parkinson's has an increase, right, in the neurotransmitter, in the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Okay. Now, what benzotropin does is that it's basically an anticholinergic, right? Obviously, so it reverses this increase. And the pharmacological term would actually be called acetylcholine receptor antagonist. Okay. So that's just a fancy term. And what it does is it basically blocks the cholinergic activity within the basal ganglia. And this decreases, obviously, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which will eventually help improve the symptoms of the Parkinson's disease, specifically in our patient, which is manifested physically as tremors, right? So this, what this drug basically does is it helps with the tremors with our patient with Parkinson's disease by blocking the cholinergic activity, therefore decreasing the acetylcholine levels in the brain. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the next primary medication, which is levodopa. Now, sometimes it's also called L-dopa for short, right? So <clears throat> don't get confused. And basically, what levodopa is used for is it basically increases the dopamine concentration in our patient with Parkinson's. Now, remember the two important neurotransmitters that are affected with our patient with Parkinson's, right? Basically, there was an increase, right, an increase in acetylcholine, and there is a decrease in dopamine, right? Now, guys, dopamine is important because it's a neurotransmitter that, that helps and allows our brains and neurons to facilitate and control motor activity in the body. And obviously, a loss or decrease uh, in dopamine can be manifested through the Parkinsonian symptoms in our patient, which we all remembered, right? So basically, what happens inside the body is that the levodopa is converted into dopamine from within the peripheral nervous system, and as a result, increases our patient's dopamine levels, okay? So this is it for now, guys. Remember, knowing and understanding the pharmacokinetics of the drug and understanding the most simple and the most basic term of what and how that drug affects the patient instead of uh, memorizing concepts that you don't even fully really understand just makes life more easier and I guarantee it will help you get prepared for your exam, okay? Again, I want to thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it knowing that you have at least learned something that can obviously help you pass your uh, NCLEX exam. And if you do feel that you want to help and support me with continuing doing all these uh, NCLEX videos, just please visit my website at www.allnursingnotes.com. And there's an NCLEX course in there that's available. And it has really helped thousands of uh, NCLEX takers pass their exam. Again, thank you so much. Good luck in your exam, guys. And I know you will do great. God bless. Thank you.